Join in, join in, join in. Let's do this. Woo. It is time, it is time, it is time. My heart is beating. I feel nervous for the last episode of The Chosen. Type one when you can hear me. We're gonna give everyone a second here. Type one when you can hear me. Whoo, here we are guys. Two and a half months later, two months later, we're getting ready to watch the finale of The Chosen. Make sure you share it on your pages. Make sure you like. We're gonna get started in one minute here. My heart is pounding, y'all. I don't know why. My heart is racing. For the last episode, the finale, I did see this in theaters, but oh man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, there's quite a surprise. I will not give any spoilers away. This is gonna be good. Let's wait to get 500 in. There's 400 in right now. Let's let people load in. We're gonna take literally one minute and then we are getting started. Let me share it on my Facebook. Type your snack in the chat. Type whatever you're drinking in the chat. Thank you, Chosen, for letting me stream this. Thank you, Dallas Jenkins, for letting me stream this and not copyright me. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you guys don't know, we interviewed Dallas two weeks ago on the channel. I got my Yahweh shirt on. You guys ready for this? Oh man, I felt like a little kid. I'm excited, I'm excited. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for. Actually, you know what? That doesn't feel right, hold on. We need some epic music. Here we go. That's more like it. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for. The last two months have led up to this point. We've seen the Pharisees constantly oppose Jesus. We've watched as the disciples struggled to understand what Jesus was teaching. We've seen the ups and the downs. Last episode, we saw Andrew and Philip struggle to understand why is Jesus' teaching causing so much division. We saw Eden struggle with the grief from her miscarriage. Shmuel looking for people to testify against Jesus. Atticus the spy observing the Jewish leaders and how they respond to Jesus. Simon discovers why Gaius' slave son is sick. We saw Mary Magdalene help Matthew understand why he got those prayer tassels long ago. We saw Matthew, Simon, I'm sorry, Matthew put the prayer tassels on. We watched as Jesus healed a mute man. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the people have gathered to seek out Jesus in this final episode. The finale, the climax of the season. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment that we've all been waiting for. Let's get some ones in the chat. Let's get some ones in the chat. It all leads up to this. What is gonna happen in the season finale? It's not what you think. It's much more exciting than you thought. I'm ready. I'm excited. Get your popcorn. Get your snacks. Get your crackers. Crackers? We're not doing communion. Whatever you are snacking on. Your Cheetos. Your Doritos. Your Funyuns. Get ready for this episode. This, I've seen in theaters, is the best episode of the season by far. So you're not gonna wanna miss this. Let's get it started. Let's turn off the epic music. Here we go. The Chosen, final episode. Oh, let's start it off. I'm excited. My heart's beating. I don't know why, but let's do this. You guys like that intro? Was that cool? Woo, here we go. I'll try not to talk. If you don't like me on the screen, go watch it on The Chosen channel. 990 BC. Okay, here we go. Our Lord Most High's anointed, King David and his queen. My king, sir. Rise, rise, please. Jonathan, Asaph, how is the peace coming along? Uh, I think we're close, Your Majesty. I'll hit a work in progress any day. A work in progress is better than no work at all, <laughs> no progress. I'm looking forward to it as well. But if I may, where are the harps, lyres, and flutes? That's, well, we were trying something new. Go on. This is a psalm of Asaph. He wrote the lyrics, I composed the music. And instead of singing and using instruments, the text will be spoken accompanied by a low hum from the choir. The human voice, the most beautiful instrument of all. A wonderful idea. Thank you, sire. My prayer for this psalm is that, like your own songs, it could be a comfort to God's people for generations to come. This is my prayer also. May it please the king. And the king. Him most of all. I 
I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and He will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, the years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. Here we go, the season finale. I did see this in theaters and I did cry multiple times. So if I don't cry, I already cried in theaters. This is by far to me the best episode in the whole season. Let's get some ones in the chat. Sure that you hit HD. If you're not watching in HD. Make sure you put it on HD. If your own followers can't figure out how best to share or live your teachings, then why should anyone else? Sit down. That's your answer. I don't mean you, I mean my students. Sit with me. Now? Yes, please. Hello, Simon. Rabbi, we didn't come here to cause trouble. Well, it would appear that trouble has found us. So then we should address it. And how do you propose to do that, Big James? Listen to them. <laughs> my friends, sit with me. We cannot go any further until we agree on something. Hmm? Please. I'm a rabbi, and as these Jewish brothers will tell you, we like to teach by asking questions. And we all like to solve problems by talking. It begins with a disagreement. Even better. So, feel free to listen. And if you'd like to argue a bit, that's fine too. Rabbi, we look weak and defenseless. On the way to Jairus' house in Capernaum, what happened when the woman Veronica touched me? Power went out from you. No, I mean, what happened to her? She was healed. How? By touching the fringe of your garment. No. My friends, you forget so quickly. You are dear to me. <laughs> but your memories are short. You said, daughter, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Your what? Faith. faith. Her faith. Many of you are afraid right now. Instead of choosing to have faith, in me. But, Rabbi, you must see what's happening all around us. Of course he does. That's the point. Rabbi, increase our faith. Judas, if you had faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you could say to a mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. 
Can a mulberry tree grow in the sea? He's making a point. Truly, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to a mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. How? How do we get there? Like Judas said, you increase our faith. It's not about size, Philip. It's about who your faith is in. If your faith is secure in God, trusting His promises, choosing His will for your life instead of your own, this sized faith is enough. These people we are ministering to, they are like bees hovering among the flowers, waiting for them to open up so they can sip the nectar and spread it to others. But they must see a faith in you that is secure, big or small. Looks like you have your work cut out for you. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You're right, teacher. They do have short memories. Excuse me. What, what are you doing? Step back. We're listening to our teacher. So am I. Ignore him, son. This moment is about us and Jesus. What is that smell? Rancid. Oh. It is an infection, okay? My leg is broken and it got infected. Mind your own business. You need to get that checked out. It's really bad. You're right. Unclean! Silence. Look, I didn't ask to get a broken leg. And we didn't ask for him to come into this region and make things worse. I'll talk to you in a moment. I'm here to test what he said about the faith of the bleeding woman. I already know, brother. I know you. Under normal circumstances, I would strictly charge you to tell no one, in some regions and with some people. It's just not my time to be revealed and to escalate tension too soon. But it looks like we're past that. It's been a long time since I've read. Glad you came, Simon. It's going to be a long day. Oh, oh my. Shalom. It's good to see you, Isa. <laughs> what a surprise. Is everything all right? Good be here. Have a word inside. Of course. What can I get you to drink? Please, Eden, we're fine. Let's sit down. Is something wrong? You tell us. Seb. This morning, I ran into Simon at Matthew's old house. He was in a bad way. Oh, well, that's his way. He's all mine. I've known him since he was born. This wasn't Simon being Simon. Eden, we love you like the daughter we never had. 
Ever since the day you married Simon, a lot has changed in all our lives these past two years, especially yours. And I sense, well, we sense that some part of Simon's distractedness has something to do with your marriage. I will not say it is. We just want you to know that you can talk to us. We are here for you, no matter what's happening. Lord knows we are not perfect, but we have been married for a long time. If there's anything we can do to help, we want to. I myself am none too pleased with Simon at the moment. But I know he's a good man. I fished with his father, Jonah, for 20 years and never really knew the man. He was so difficult and distant. But Simon has tried to be better than that. And now he's learning a completely different way of living that would be bewildering for any person, let alone Simon. It's not just him. I mean, it's both of us. But if I'm honest, it started. It started when um, Are you hurt? No, it's... Zeb. Give us a moment alone. Of course. I don't know. And neither does Simon, which is our problem. I'm sorry. Eden, I haven't known you for very long, and I don't know anything about marriage. Actually, not that I think about it, I probably shouldn't. No, please. You may not be married, but you have suffered. You have lost family. Still, I am new to all of this, so just know that you say you have completed your ritual purification requirements. Not in the mikveh, because of the broken cistern. But in the sea, yes. And I, I isolated for seven days, which wasn't hard since Simon was gone. And being cleansed didn't help at all? No. It made it worse, because it didn't bring my baby back. And it didn't help with my marriage. And that, that, that woman, Veronica, who Jesus healed, when she cleansed in the sea, she had so much joy. She had just been healed of her malady. Her anguish was over. And you were only at the beginning of your grief, child. Are. Have you talked to a rabbi? The one I want to talk to is not here. And neither is my husband. I don't know what it's like to go through what you have. But I have been through enough to know that you need to grieve. Jesus gave her healing and joy, but he hasn't given that to me. So go to synagogue. <laughs> it's not about the rabbi there, it's the words from God that he can give us. That's what Jesus gave me. Uh, we're 15 minutes in, we still have about an hour and a half, so if you're just jumping in asking if you missed, you didn't miss it. It's just starting. Now, what is your name? 
Fatia. She is Nabatean. I didn't ask her ethnicity. Fatia, help us all understand what exactly has happened in this region. Your students preached the Nave about a kingdom that entranced many from this region who visiting the city, including the Augur of Abila, who stopped performing his ceremonial and civic duties upon returning to the capitalists. Work came to a standstill. Construction was halted. Merchants could not get permits, and wells went undug. So you're telling me that the region was paralyzed by the absence of one man? What Fatia did not say is that the merchants who could not get permits hijacked a caravan of exports from my Syrophoenician brothers. We had a deal in place that you reneged. What is your name? Eremus. I'm a bronze caster. You appear to be in good health and strength. You're well dressed in Athenian blue. It matches your eyes. Tell me, Hermes, what is your plight? I bought a plot of land in the north. I needed a reading of the auspices to determine the god's favorability regarding construction of a new casting facility. Hmm. Sounds so simple. But because of what those Jews said, Do not I associate these people with our order. You stood by as reports of their teaching poisoned the mind. You don't know what we have and haven't done, Fatia. We strenuously disavow all of their teachings. We have been punished for crimes we did not commit. Andrew, Philip, yes, Rabbi, sir. did you direct your teaching to Jewish citizens? Yes. As you instructed. But the auger from Abila overheard and was moved. Hmm. Aramis, what would the auger's reading have told you? Whether they were good or bad omens. Doesn't that sound absurd? You would call us absurd? Jew? Your laws about food and purity are laughable. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Sit down, brothers. The last thing these people need is thunder. Hey, sons of thunder. How can I build a business without knowing where the gods want me to build? Hmm? Nazarene, if you are any sort of self-respecting rabbi, you will not dignify that question with an answer. Your people's condescension is unending. Oh, and there's never been a note of condescension in your voice, Fatia? Let's stay on topic. Hmm? So here we have Eremis, paralyzed by fear that his business ambitions might not be sanctioned by the gods of his religion. How could this lead to violence? The Ogre's flagrant rebellion undermined Greek authority. And yet the Jewish community was targeted in a brutal wave of attacks. My people were hardest hit for not having paperwork with Rome. And you turned to crime! Out of desperation! That is why I brought Andrew and Philip back to clarify their message. They told the story about hospitality. But for some reason, Jews and Arabs came to blows over it. The people originally invited to the banquet in your story had perfectly legitimate reasons for not coming. Which is another way of saying some people think the old way of doing things is better. Look to the ancient roads where the good way is and walk in it. You know your prophets? Of course I do. What about Isaiah? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Do not pit prophets against each other, especially on this issue. The people on the highways and hedges, surely you're not referring to the Gentiles. You sound like you don't want us to come to the banquet. The meaning of the story is that God wants his house full. And everyone who believes in me is invited. Plain and simple. Heresy! You know, you sound just like the people at the beginning of the story who declined to come to the banquet. I wouldn't be caught dead at a banquet with you. I couldn't stand before God if I was. Now do you see? So you're telling me that prior to Andrew and Philip's visit, the Decapolis was a veritable paradise of peace and unity? At least groups kept to themselves. Stop. Our town of Abila has been on edge for decades. Ah, we always knew the Jews were fractious and divided, but quietly, inside their synagogue. At least we go to Jerusalem to make our sacrifices. Not like you Greeks who leave your offerings on public altars to rot and stink. Ever wonder why Zeus never seems to come down to eat of your offerings? Maybe it's because the wine is sour and spoiled. Maybe it's because there is no Zeus. The Augur's apprentice secretly removes the votive offerings under cover of a night when the stench is unbearable. So basically your religion is a sham. Again, that contemptuous spirit. Are you proud to belong to this denigrating race? Aramis, please. Jesus, your fame is well known. We've heard how you work wonders and change lives and preached a sermon on the Chorazin Plateau that 
Some are saying may become the most significant speech the world has ever known. I wasn't doing it to become famous. Well, too bad. Because you are. And specifically for succeeding at all you put your hand to. Looks like you've arrived at your first failure. Jesus of Nazareth. If you are who you say you are, why do you inspire and transform some people, but threaten and disgust others? Let me wow. tell you a story. <laughs> I know, I know. But this is another thing we Jews do. And come to think of it, so do the Greeks. So everyone just listen up. A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. I can't hear you. Ah, more listening. I'm going to move back so we can welcome as many as possible. Students, please, spread out and organize the people and help pass my words on to those far away. You want to send us out into Go on. We can trust him, John. Z, Big James, stand here for protection. For those asking who's the guy in the corner, my name's Isaiah Saldivar. This is my channel. That's why it says my reaction and review. So, hello. Welcome. Also, if you guys have questions, two weeks ago I interviewed the creator of the show. Go watch that podcast on my channel. It'll answer all your questions. You've come from Perea. The Decapolis. That explains it. Explains what? Fair tassels. You aren't wearing any. Yes, they are not in style in the Hellenist cities. What brings you to Judea? An important errand in Jerusalem. You might consider stopping in Jericho on your way to pick up some tassels. But you aren't wearing any in the Holy City. Thank you, but I have weightier matters on the mind than fashion. You better hurry. There is a storm coming. There certainly is. <laughs> this man, Leander, asked, how can it be that I inspire and transform some people, but seem to threaten and repulse others? And so, as I said, I'd like to respond with a story. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much immediately soil. Immediately they sprang up, for there was no depth of soil. And immediately they sprang up, for there was no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. And since they had no root, they withered away. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty. Some thirty. Some a hundredfold. Some sixty. Some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. For yet rejecting me as I am in the You seeing this? Simon, this crowd. We are completely surrounded. There must be thousands. in heaven. I'm coming. I'm sorry to disturb you, Rabbi, but it's urgent.
Rabbi Shmuel, it is a great honor. Forgive the late hour. My name is Nashon, son of Eliab of Abila. You've ridden a great distance. Did your tassels fall off along the way? Oh, my goodness. Yes, uh, they must have. My apologies. I... Give him a spare. Please. I heard the great Shammai has issued an edict regarding false prophecy. To be on guard and alert for anything amiss. Yes. I have just encountered... What is that vest? Oh, this was a gift from my wife. Damask. So named for Damascus, where it is made. A silk and linen weave very popular in the Hellenic cities. Remove it at once. Excuse me? Take it off. I... According to the law of Moses, you shall not wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. Oh, I... I thought that was just an old... An old what? Finish that sentence. I don't know. A thing about not imitating Canaanite culture, a cultural prohibition for its time. I didn't think anyone Torah actually... Torah is timeless. I understand. Again, my apologies. I did not intend to sin. It is as I expected in the Decapolis. Greek influence has polluted your faith. But, apparently not so much that you did not heed Judge Shammai's edict. I encountered a Jewish rabbi consorting with Gentiles. Multitudes. He even healed a Gentile deaf mute. Tell me about the preacher. Um, three weeks ago, a pair of students from Capernaum were teaching in the way to a group they didn't realize was both Jew and Gentile, repeating the teachings of their rabbi, whose name they said was Jesus. Of? What do you mean? Jesus from where? A small town called Nazareth, if you can believe. I require no further information from you. But so Rabbi... the temple guard. Retrieve Rabbi Yanni. I'll gather Shammai's representatives. Meet us at the Herodian staircase. Don't give any spoilers away or you'll be muted temporarily. I just muted someone. Do not give away spoilers, please. Thank you. Yes, I saw this in theaters. Best episode of the season. Do not give spoilers out on the end or you will be muted. Mods, mute anybody that puts out spoilers. Put them in a five minute timeout. 14 hands. Athenian blanket. Thank God. Macedonian bridal leather. Syro Phoenician hammer finished steel shoes. Whoa. And you left her untethered, untended. I was in such a hurry. Here, for your pains, I am terribly grateful. No, it's all right. My pleasure, really. But tell me. What could be so important that you would leave such a rare beauty vulnerable to theft or uh, wandering off? I had important business with Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel? I am fascinated to know more. You must be very important yourself. Hmm? What I'm about to say is for Jews as much as Gentiles. So many cities are missing the need for repentance and righteousness. I have already preached and done miracles in multiple cities, as have my followers. And yet they still fall short. So many of you are here listening to me, eager to be drawn closer to God, eager to find peace in your souls. And in doing so, you have more wisdom than most of the religious leaders who refuse to be humble. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. And I am revealing the Father to you now, Jew and Gentile. What is stirring in your hearts in the middle of such division and unrest is Father God being revealed to you. Come to me 
all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Speaking of rest, we all need it now, including me. So wherever you want to lay your head, let's sleep, and I will continue in the morning. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, please, let Jesus rest. We'll be back in the morning. How could you not want to follow Jesus? I don't understand. He's amazing. Night, Monsieur. Judas, do you have the count? Yes. There's at least 1,000 to the south. There were still people arriving after the sun went down. Are Andrew and Philip back? No, but before it got dark, both points of the compass looked roughly equal in population. So 2,000? And counting. I said roughly, but yes. We should get going. We have a situation. What situation? The Gentiles. They're out of food. I don't think anyone expected the teaching to last all day. Well, no one has forced them to stay. Simon, they're hungry for his words. Yeah, and now they're hungry for food. It's not our problem. Can't they go back to their villages? They were driven out by violence. It's nighttime. They, they have to sleep in these fields. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get how bad things were when we first came. Whatever happened, it wouldn't change the facts of the situation. Well, I can see things are going just as well here as out there. What do you mean? Some of these people were driven from their home more than a week ago. They're hungry and tired. Don't trouble Simon with your news. His mind is anywhere but here. Andrew, be gracious with your brother. Gracious? He just said the people's hunger is not our problem and, and we should... Send them away? Did you really say that, Simon? It doesn't matter now. What matters is that we need to solve this without Simon's help. We can't. He's not the Messiah, John. Jesus is. No arguments there, but Jesus told me that... that the success of this trip depends on Simon. He said that? That's why I stayed behind. Jesus insisted that I stay back, wait for Simon, and bring him. Simon. Did he say how? No. If it all depends on you, what's the plan? Nothing. What? Jesus is capable of doing whatever he wants. In the end, that's what he'll do. Brother, you're being... If Jesus wants to provide a solution for these hungry people, that's what's going to happen. I'm sure of it. You don't seem very happy to be sure of it. If you're having issues on Facebook, come over to YouTube. Come to the light side. Get out of the dark side. Facebook is terrible. Just come to YouTube. You won't get kicked out. Azem, wake up. They're slobbering on me. Oh. How much farther do we have to go? You know the distance to the Decapolis, and you know the hour we left. An ungodly one. There's no such thing as an ungodly hour. <laughs> Tell that to my wife. We were supposed to take the children to see their grandparents in Gaza today. We serve God first, then our families. We serve God by serving our families. And you don't have one, so don't preach at me. The only preaching I've heard lately is you. Repeating Shammai's refrain that fidelity to God's law to the letter is the only thing that matters. And yet here you are. Complaining about actually having to act upon that conviction. When I filed the reports to Shammai about the healings on Shabbat and Jesus commanding his followers to eat heads of grain on Shabbat, your very own Shammai said to me that we would wait to take action until we knew it was God's time. Ugh. Wisdom I wish you would have heeded. You forget your rank and stature, Shmuel. To the contrary, cognizant of my rank and stature, I asked him how we would know it was God's time. 
His answer? When evidence was abundant. Nashon said the crowds passing him on the road could only be described as multitudes of Gentiles. That's the other thing about all this. Gentiles? Why are we meddling in the Decapolis? It's the holy city that matters. So, a sin is only a sin if it happens in or near Jerusalem? No, no, no. It's a matter of allocating resources. There's more syncretism and Hellenist influences desecrating our people's practice in the Decapolis than we could ever hope to address in any meaningful way. The hassle of hunting down a single Jew who may be leading some people astray is myopic. My, oh, unappealing. I'm sorry that false teaching is such a burden to you. I'm sorry it's such a burden to you. That's enough of all this. I think the one thing that we can all agree on is that if we find him performing any magic tricks or sorcery, we will have to take action. It's been a long time since I've prosecuted the witchcraft case. They can be unwieldy. That's the heresy Which hunters traveling to my channel. I let them come to me. So don't go looking say. for them. Is there any way to go faster? Yes, you Rabbi. summoned the carriage in the middle of the night. Did you expect Caiaphas to handpick your steeds? Ah, oh, just relax. I had to say it, I'm sorry. Tell me what you think of this. A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind, and he went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two sons did the will of the father? The first! Many of you are from cities such as Tyre and Sidon. Cities that have rejected God's you... attention. Where did you find that? At the bottom of my bag. <laughs> Forgot it was in there. It's a little stale, but it'll do. You, you've been out here for days and, and you just you just discovered it? I, I followed some men who told me we were coming to watch a fight. A fight? Everyone <laughs> was just in such a hurry. Fight. Does anyone have any food? Is it, no. Food? Your name is Andrew, yes? Yes, Telemachus. I wanted to say thank you again for everything you... I'm not the one who healed your father, but I can certainly pass that along. You've been asking about food. Yes. I want to share what I have. Somnis can feed one family of the thousands. I just wanted to do what I could. The kingdom of heaven you okay? It's like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. What do you mean by that? No, I don't know. Let me say it another way. Instead of, we should It's like a merchant in search of fine Why? pearl. Why? There's no way to feed these one people. One pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Listen carefully, because this is accessible to all of you, regardless of race or creed. It's the last thing we need the to do. The kingdom okay, is so saying. valuable that once you have glimpsed it, it's worth parting with everything you have you in order to gain it. We shouldn't burden him. Even though to others you might look like a fool, throwing away your life savings to buy what would look to others an unremarkable field. But you know of the hidden treasure. And that makes it worth everything. Have you come closer to here better? No, there, there is an issue. My friends, if you'll excuse me, I must speak with my students a moment.
Rabbi, mm. people are out of food. Yeah, some have been without food for days, others have traveled a great distance. So, give them something to eat. We're out of food. They're out of food. Is it time to send them home? Well, at this point, they're so hungry and tired that if we send them home, they're faint along the way. You knew they were hungry? Yes, Judas. I can see them while I'm talking. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, this is a tough one. Where can we buy some bread for all these people? Well, we only came with a little over 200 denarii. Rabbi, that's not even enough to get a little bit for everyone. I wouldn't even know how to calculate that. Matthew and I can calculate that. That's really easy. Maybe if we go into the cities, we can negotiate something on credit. Yes. Yes, that could work. Negotiate with whom? The closest city is Abila, and its entire population is here. It's nine miles away, and even if we raided every house in town, we'd have to find a way to bring it back here, and it would still only feed a fraction of the masses. Can you bring me anything? Surely there's some food from someone, even a small amount. Five loaves of bread and two fish. But what is this for so many? Barley loaves. Two fish and five barley loaves. Thank you for clarifying. This is humiliating. John? He will take care of it if he wants to. You look scared. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid that he'll choose them. This is wonderful bread, Telemachus. I know it's not enough. Oh, it's enough for me. I can do a lot with this. Ooh, preach! Thank you. Preach! Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. That they find some bread. If they've got bread, be ready. We'll probably be first. Feed them. What has changed? Are we organized the people into groups of 50 and 100? Gather up 12 baskets to distribute the loaves and fish. Was I unclear? Ah, no. This feels familiar. Maybe. Let's go. Does anyone have a basket? Please borrow a basket. Please. 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 Come on. It's important. Yes, over here. Feed them. Yes. Anyone have a basket? Anyone? This is so epic. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds. But when it has grown, it is larger than all the gardens. It becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and make their nests in its branches. I've got one. Okay. Let's just keep on. Okay. Break up the bread. Okay. How many do we have? Yeah. 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 There, you take some. There. Work the tracks. Just need some. Give me some of that. Just like that. Yeah. yeah. There. There. Anyone yeah. need some? It's better than the tail. That's the last of it. Yeah, that's the last of it. All right, Marcus, well, you can have your basket back. Look! Oh. <laughs> 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 
Is your basket full? <laughs> you see this? <laughs> you see all this? <laughs> How? How? <laughs> Let's go. I've kept you here all this time giving you spiritual food. But you clearly need actual food now. So let's eat! Rabbi this is live, by the way, for everyone who's saying this is pre recorded. We're live. It's Rabbi Josiah is visiting ours. Is that he unable so to assist? I'm in the middle of something very important. One of the women says to tell you she is the wife of Simon, son of Jonah. Oh, of Jesus. Is... Yes, please. Send him in. You have my deepest condolences. Torah has very little to say on this specific matter, I'm afraid. But sorrow is sorrow. Especially since your husband is... Gone. Perhaps, but I was going to say distracted. There is much going on with Jesus. And in many ways, the world is upending with Simon in the middle of it. I'm making sense of it myself. Maybe I've been too distracted. It's easy to forget there are still matters of great importance to tend to in the home. Are you angry with him? Yes. I understand. Uh, you mentioned you did your purification in the sea. Now that some time has passed, what about a new cleansing, but in the mikveh? With a prayerful state of mind, maybe this could be part of a new path forward. But the cistern... Uh, we received word this morning it will be operational by sundown. Actually, I believe Simon helped in the speedy repair. Perhaps when she is ready. We were hoping today for a reading from Torah. Of course. Did you have anything in mind? Perhaps something uplifting and joyful, Rabbi? I'm not sure that would be truthful. There are many psalms of anguish and even anger. And they are all just as important as the others. No spoilers, fact, or you'll be put on time some out. some of the desperate psalms draw us closest to God. One of David's appointed chief musicians, Asaph, was inclined to write in this depth. As in this passage, in the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. 
In the night, my hand stretches out without wearying. This psalm is desperate, even angry. Do you know who else is undoubtedly desperate and angry? Simon. I know him a little, and I'm sure he's actually very angry. And making that known to others. Perhaps you can pray this with him and for him. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. Wow. When I meditate, my spirit faints. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in his anger shut up his compassion? But that's not the whole song, is it? Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God that works wonders. You have made your might known among the peoples. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Mr. James, what happened? Your basket looks heavier than before. <laughs> Everyone ate it was satisfied. They didn't want any more, they were full. You gave us even more than we needed. You will get used to this kind of math, Judas. <laughs> I'm in. Thank you, Rabbi. Can't believe we ever doubted. Well, I was the one to cause their hunger. I should be the one to satisfy it, no? Mm. I, I am no longer surprised. You're a new Matthew. <laughs> oh, sorry. But... <laughs> Meant it. <laughs> it's always this way. I don't know why I'm surprised. It's, um, it's just like Simon said it would be. John. If you have not seen this episode, do not read the chat because people are putting spoilers. If you have not seen this episode, do not read the chat. I've seen this episode already, so those of you saying people are going to spoil it for you, I've already saw this episode in theaters. This episode came out last night. He wasn't exaggerating. This is more than I ever thought. That's a Nabataean roll. That headdress is Arabian? We're in a sea of Gentiles. Driver, stop! What is this? What has been happening? The teacher from Nazareth. Uh, how long have you been out here listening to the teacher? Two days. But we are several miles from any city. How did you eat? He multiplied loaves and fish to feed us, thousands of us. What do you mean, multiply? There just kept being more and more by his hand. A miracle? We need the evidence of three witnesses. <laughs> that won't be difficult. Did he and his followers also partake? Of course. 
he breaks bread with Gentiles. I tell them God performed the miracle and they say, but he ate with the wrong people. <laughs> we already we knew an Pharisees. Ethiopian woman travels with him changed. and his students. But breaking bread, that's worse than I thought. Again, we need witnesses. Pharisees from Judea. You're a little late, you missed the show. Name the teacher. Jesus of Nazareth. A name I will never forget. What did he preach? Did any of it run contrary to Torah? He preached about the kingdom of heaven. Which is what? Everything. Uh, uh, mustard seed, a pearl of great price, treasure hidden in a field, but the best part. He said that in the kingdom of heaven, many would come from east and west with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's all of us, Jew and Gentile, together at one table. What? We need a third witness. Jesus of Nazareth may be the first Jew to break bread with Gentiles, but he won't be the last. And it will be with your patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Blasphemy. Come on, I love it. You've hurt our people. We've hurt each other. But he is healing us. That's one of the best scenes right there. That is literally the gospel preached. We need three witnesses. What? What did the teacher say about oh. Gentiles reclining at table with patriarchs? What did the teacher say? What did the teacher say about Gentiles reclining at table with patriarchs? What did the teacher say? Okay. Okay, it will do it. Not amazing what it will do. No, 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 no net, no fish, nothing. I just want the boat. I want four hours waiting inside when I come back. Listen, how much you want? Because I'm in a rush, it's waiting for you, okay? What do we do now? It's a 13 mile walk back to Copernium, all the way around the sea, in the rain and in the dark. Look at everything we had to do today. Carrying the baskets and distributing food. I'll do my best. We won't leave you behind, James. We're not walking. We're rowing. It's only eight miles across. I got a boat. And we can row faster than we can walk. Come on, big James. You know we're good at this. <laughs> yeah. Excellent strategy, Simon. <laughs> Simon is right. Everyone get into the boat and row back across to Capernaum. What about you? <sighs> it's been a long three days. I need some time alone to pray. But there are storm clouds on the horizon. Let me stay with you, Rabbi. I'll keep watch. Be fine. All of you go. Hurry. Follow Simon. You all did so well today. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. 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 Shalom, shalom. Oh, sorry, I forgot I wasn't in the show. I'm trying to get a roll, Dallas. Where are you at? I stayed behind so you could get us a boat. I won't be in your way for long. Have faith, Simon. Faith isn't my problem. I think I was a mistake. Even God makes them, right? Go. You heard him. Let's go. Okay, so go this way. Familiar. I, more specifically, and I mean no offense, you look troubled. I am. I'm going up this hill to pray. Would you care to join me? 
We don't have to talk about anything if you don't want. I know sometimes people who are troubled just need someone to sit with them in silence. Like Job. Mm. Is it that bad? Not quite. More like David. Ah. Boucher. How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? You're losing something. I know what that's like. What are you losing? Time. Whoa. Come. Join me in prayer for a little while. Will you speak with me after? I will. If you still want to question me after we pray. There will be seven seasons total. And Dallas might be in here. He does watch the streams, which is awesome. So he might be watching this with us. I'll answer questions after the stream. I call you to me. 
You would step out in faith? Yes! Then why are you upset? Why are you chasing after Gentiles when your own people have problems right here? When your own person has problems? I've been right here in front of you, believing in you, but you're breaking up fights in the Decapolis? Then come to me, you, weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Breathe my heart. <sighs> I'm sinking. Lord, send me. I'm sinking. In the shadow of your wings, do we take refuge? on me. I promise. Can't breathe. Don't 
Let me go. I'm here. I'm always here. I let people go hungry. But I feed them. Please. Please don't let me go. I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea. Your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. I think it's ready. gentlemen wow wow what can we say about that episode my mind my heart i feel like i can't breathe let's hear what you guys think about it in the chat wow 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 what a way to end the season season three i'll answer some of your chosen questions they're gonna make seven seasons ladies and gentlemen we need some epic music here that was absolutely epic the walking on water the feeding of the five thousand, every single scene the healing of the man with the broken leg, the way they tied in the scene with Simon and his wife together. Oh man, masterpiece, the chef's kiss. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Dallas Jenkins and the chosen team for letting me watch every episode live on stream. We appreciate you guys so much. Make sure that you guys give into the chosen. If you haven't partnered with the chosen, make sure that you partner. I have the giving link down below. They're basically supported by the viewers. So wow, that was absolutely epic. I don't know what else to say. I cannot wait. Is it season four yet? I'll be watching season four on stream. God willing. Absolutely amazing. Woo. 
What do we say about that? Oh, so good. I try not to talk throughout the whole thing. Those of you that are like, who is this guy on the screen? My name is Isaiah Saldivar. This is my channel. That's why it says my reaction, my review. Check out my other content. We actually had the creator of The Chosen on the stream two weeks ago. Dallas Jenkins was on the stream. So he answered all of your questions. I could answer some of them based on what he answered. The show was made by Dallas, who's an evangelical Christian. So this is a Christian show. It's not a audio Bible. This is going to help many of you in the chat tonight or this afternoon. This is not audio Bible. So if you're looking for a word for word translation, it's not that. This is a television show based on the story of Jesus in the New Testament. So if you're looking like, well, this wasn't in or this wasn't, it's not claiming to be in the Bible. It's not claiming that everything's scriptural. It's based on the events of scripture and it doesn't ever, it will never go against the Bible, but it's not a word for word audio Bible. It's a television show, seven seasons, he confirmed. So that might help some of you that are like, well, what about this? What about that? This is based on a true story. If you don't know the story of Jesus, how could you watch this and not want to serve Jesus? How could you watch this and be like, Jesus, isn't that cool? Man, this has brought many people to Christ. This has re-sparked a fire in per people I personally know that have lost their passion fire for God. This show has brought them back to the faith, put them back on fire. So this show has done amazing things. I love the show. If you don't love the show, if you're one of those that are like, ah, then just don't watch it. Okay, you don't need to spread hate, negative comments. Some of you sound like CNN in the comment section with your fake news. Stop saying it's a Mormon show. It's not a Mormon show. It's a Christian show and it's amazing. So if you don't like it, just don't watch. Not that big of a deal. Just don't come in here and spam your comments. But yes, my name is Jose Saldivar. For those of you wondering, uh, you just came to watch the show and you stayed for the commentary. Awesome. I, I caught a lot of stuff the second time watching it than I did the first time. You could also watch the replay. This will also stay up. So yeah. So good. Someone said, I love it. Jesus is awesome. What a way to end it. But I'll, oh man, I'm already ready for the next one. I think it's a year until the next one. But man, that was incredible. And I guess Dallas said that last scene wasn't even going to be in there. It wasn't, but I'm so glad they put it in there. That was, I was going to say that was my favorite scene of the whole season. But honestly, I think that might've been my favorite scene of like all time of any show, any movie. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. That might be my favorite scene of any show, any movie of all time. That scene with Simon on the boat. And okay, I need to also ask you guys this. Did anyone else, th this might sound so dumb. Some of you are like, no. Did anyone else picture when you read the story in the Bible, they were in a big, large ship? Like anytime I preached that story or read the story, I always pictured them in like a massive ship hanging on to the ship mast. I never pictured them in a rowboat. I'm like, wait a minute, they were, in, they, were, they were in a rowboat. They weren't in a massive ship. So the whole storm made it like so much more powerful when I, maybe it's just me. Type one, if you thought they were in a massive ship when you read that story, but now you're like, oh wait, they weren't in a massive ship. Shalom, shalom, amazing. Yeah, so that definitely, I don't know why my chat keeps freezing today. I've had to refresh my chat like 20 times because it keeps freezing. Not sure what's going on. But yeah, type one, if you thought they were in a massive ship and you're like, oh, they were in a little boat. Yeah, that's crazy. I just caught that. Okay, lots of ones. The chat on screen looks like it's way delayed, but there's like a million ones flying through the chat. Let's see. I think the chat on screen is a bit delayed here. We're going to see a lot of ones pop up because my chat on my screen has like a million ones. For some reason, the chat's delayed. Someone said no. Well, hey, one or two people didn't think it, but I think a bunch of you thought that. I saw that. I was like, whoa, that was so good. No, you didn't think that? Okay. I thought that. I watched it. I was like, wow, I didn't even think it was like a rowboat. I believe this show, yeah, has brought a lot of people back to their faith. Man, this chat on screen is just not, is way behind. Let me see if I could refresh it. Is this it right here? Let me refresh this. This is like, I don't know if I can refresh it. It's, it's like t 10 minutes behind, but I have another chat here. What are the ones for? The ones just like, yes, I agree. We just type one that you're still alive in the chat. It's just like, yes, I agree. It's just a fun thing that we do. It's, there's nothing uh, deep about it. Nothing special. No special meaning besides just like, yes, I agree. But man, yeah, some of you are like the chat on screen. I should just take it off. It's like 10 minutes behind. Isaiah, no crazy bro. Got a big imagination. Yeah, I always thought it was like a big ship. I never pictured it to being a rowboat. Who's the couple on the thrones? It was David and his wife. I don't know. I don't know um, who exactly it was at that time, but it was David and his wife. Some of these guys out here had a whole bunch of wives, if you know what I mean. 
But yeah, it was David. I love that, the way they tied David in. Oh, and the acting. There was someone in here like, the acting's not good. I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you mean acting's not good? Let's see you act. The acting was, I think the acting's top notch. Like, top, top notch. So yeah, if you're like, the acting wasn't good, I don't know who, what movies you've been watching. I don't know what movies some of y'all been watching, but that acting was top notch. Oh man, my heart. I feel like I need to like go take a nap and recover from that. My heart, man, my heart was beating. Now both of the chats are frozen. What is going on with Restream? Restream, y'all need to get your stuff together. I'm actually gonna reach out to this company that does the chat and the Restream because their thing has been freezing and not working. They need to get, they need to get their act together and get this fixed for real though. I watched every episode three times. Well, hey, yeah, the acting was amazing. I don't know what you guys are talking about. The acting wasn't good. The acting was incredible. David lost his first son with Bathsheba. I thought that was his wife. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Who's the man on the horse? I think his name is Atticus. He's like a one of the Roman soldiers or something like that. Watch the theaters. Yes, I did too. I cried in theaters like five times. My, my I don't do like an ugly cry, you know what I mean? Where it's like, Meh. I just, my eyes just water and I cry. But I, I cried a bunch of times in the theaters. I was biting my lip. But yeah, so it was amazing. My chest was exploding. Yes, yes. So I, let me just rant one more time. Some of y'all out here watch every crazy, terrible show, and then you don't like The Chosen. I don't understand. You're in line to watch all these demonic movies, like, and then you come in here and like, I don't like The Chosen. I'm like, this is the most wholesome, clean show on television right now. Like, come on now. Or on online streaming. Who even watches television? I mean, for real, though. Yeah, I thought the boat was bigger. Me too. Thank you. I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one because it was like uh, 500 ones. But yeah, I, never, I always pictured the boat as being like a big ship just traveling through the sea. But no, it was definitely a fishing boat, a little rowboat. Where are your glasses? They're right here. I don't, I don't really need them to watch stuff close, you know, whatever. Yeah, that was the best, best scene, best episode. Hats off to the Chosen, Dallas Jenkins. Again, thank you guys. Thank you, Dallas. Thank you, Chosen, for letting me stream this and being on the podcast. If you guys are interested... Go on my channel and watch the interview I did with Dallas Jenkins and all the questions you guys ask, he answers about everything. So go watch that interview. It was very interesting if you're a Chosen fan. If you're not a Chosen fan, maybe you'll become one after watching it. So it's really good. Such a good episode. We had like almost 3,000 people at the end of the episode. So yeah, I appreciate the Chosen. No, they're not sponsored by the Mormon Church. Fake news. Go watch the interview before you post stuff in the comments. Thank you, Jenna and Anonymous, for the donation. Make sure you guys also partner with The Chosen. The link to give is down below. They offer this free. Like, no show at this level that has a massive budget is going to let a streamer like me air it for free. Like, it was free. You didn't pay to watch this tonight. So, go so into their ministry because they put it out for free. That just never happens. So, I hats off to them for doing that. So good. Okay, guys. We will be live in the new studio to, uh, Friday night at 6 o'clock. If you want to know a bit about me, come watch the stream on Friday night in the brand new studio, 6 p.m. Maybe my wife will be on. Can we get her on? I don't know. Can we convince her? We'll see. But yes, that'll be Friday night. And then tomorrow night at 6 p.m. on this channel, we have a brand new video coming out. Very new video coming out. Very new. They're all very new. I was live, by the way, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm live five times this week. So help your boy out. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all the stuff. I'm posting three shorts every single day. How long will this last? I don't know. But right now we're posting three shorts every single day. There's the chat disappearing again. I don't know what's going on with that restream. So guys, I love you. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Rewatch it if you didn't watch it. I'll see you guys Friday night, 6 o'clock. Love y'all. Have a good night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Love you guys. Where's my stream ending? There it is. Good night. Or good afternoon. I'm used to streaming at night, so give me a break. Take care, guys. Awesome, awesome time. Thanks for being here as always. We appreciate you guys. Have a good night. See you guys. Have a good afternoon. Take care.
Goodbye. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Have a good afternoon and good night. Make sure you get your tickets for Come Out in Jesus' Name. We have a movie coming out March 13th in 2000 theaters. Come out in Jesus' Name.com, our deliverance movie. This is a huge deal. I just typed it in the chat. Go get your ticket right now. Come out in Jesus' Name.com. Get your ticket. Go get your ticket to our movie coming out March 13th in theaters by Fathom Events. The same people that put The Chosen in the theaters is putting our movie in theaters. Go get your go get your ticket. Come out in Jesus name.com. Go get it. <laughs>